We're now ready to get into the subject of deformations, and in this lesson, we'll learn how to work with Max's FFD modifier, which is great for deforming a collection of objects. Freeform deformers, or FFDs, are useful when we need to take a, a collection of objects and have them deform as one unit. What it will basically do is cage those objects, then we can deform them with the use of control points. So let's take a closer look at this. Here we have a segmented creature. Now let's say if we wanted to take all of these pieces and again have them deform as if they were all connected. Well, we could go ahead and select them all, head over to our modify panel, and if we were to press the F key, that will quickly take us to our FFDs. So you can see we have several to pick and choose from. The first three are a bit limited because the resolution for each lattice is already set. Here's two, three, and four. But with box and cylinder, we can decide how much resolution each will have. We're going to work with the box in this lesson. If you know how to use box, you know how to use the others. So just go ahead and choose box. And now you can see that we have that type of cage that surrounds this creature. So if we were to go ahead and take a look at the sub-object level of our FFD, notice we can now get to control points and start to adjust them to adjust the deformations. Now, if we were to go ahead and take just one point and start to move it around, you can see that, yes, there's a little bit of influence, but not much, and that's due to how much resolution this cage has and where this point is located. However, if we were to go ahead and take this entire row of points and start to move these, now we could start to see the true benefit of working with an FFD. Notice we can go ahead and grab the next row, and it looks as if this segmented mesh is actually moving as if it were already connected, as if it were neg never segmented in the first place, which is really cool. Now, what if we wanted to increase the amount of resolution? Because right now, as we start to pull the first two rows, we're influencing not only the head and neck, but also a bit of the torso. So let's say if we wanted to isolate the amount of deformations we have. Well, what we could do is go ahead and set the number of points from here, right underneath the FFD parameters rollout. We can go ahead and increase the resolution. So I'll go ahead and increase this to 7 and choose OK. So now we have more points to work with and watch if we were to grab the first three rows you can see that now we're only influencing the head and neck the torso is barely being pulled at all now if you notice that you are getting too much sliding around the torso what you could do is adjust your tension and continuity all right so that will start to influence again the amount of influence this cage has on the the affected mesh. So notice as we start to increase, let's say, the continuity, now as we start to pull these points, we're starting to influence the torso a bit more. But that's a bit more of a, a skewing type of look. So what I'd like to do is just go ahead and zero out the continuity, and that will make it possible for us to just influence what we'd like instead of causing any other points that we don't have selected to be influenced as well. All right, so that's a, a quick look at the FFD deformer in 3ds Max. One more really neat feature I'd like to show you is the type of effects we can create if we were to animate this deformer. So let's say we go ahead and reset this. I'll head over to the control point section and I'll choose reset. All right, now let's go ahead and add some animation to our lattice. So with the lattice here, what we could do is we can decide on what points will be influenced on the, on the mesh that we've assigned the freeform deformer to. Alright, so what we'll do is go ahead and enable auto key and on frame 0, let's go ahead and set an initial key so we can always get back to this default position. Then on frame 20, we can go ahead and add some animation where we pull the lattice to our right and then on frame 40, we'll pull it over to our left. Great. So now, on about frame 10, let's go ahead and grab our control points of object. And we'll go ahead and grab the points at the, the top here. We're going to pull those up. Take a look at what type of effect this creates. 
So now you can see that we've created some skin sliding, which is really cool. Now you can see that only the points that the lattice passes through are being affected. If we wanted all points to be affected, well, we could go ahead and scroll up to the top here and choose all vertices. Now, depending on how we have animated the lattice, this might or might not be a good choice. Since we have created this sliding effect, you can see that the skewing we get is not good at all. However, you may want to use all vertices if you were to skin your, your lattice, if you weren't to animate it at all. Then that will assure you that all points will be influenced no matter if the cage is around the the creature or if it were to be slightly offset. But in our case, for skin sliding, we might want to leave this set back to only in volume. Great. Now one more thing I'd like to show you here is set volume. And this is just a way of having your cage conform better to the mesh that you've created the FFD for. So really quickly, if you wanted to get rid of the animation here, we could go to our first frame, frame zero, back to the initial state. We can go ahead and alt right click and choose delete selected animation to clear everything out. So set volume. What that's going to do is it's going to allow us to take our points and kind of move them in a way. Let me go ahead and turn off auto key. We can go ahead and move them to kind of conform them better to our creature. So we have a lot of points here to work with. I won't go ahead and take care of all of them. But just to show you, we're moving these points without influencing the creature at all. Not until we were to go back to control points mode will we be able to go back and start to pull these again. So this is really cool. What this means is that we can create a closer proximity between the lattice and the mesh it controls. So that's a look at the FFD modifier and Max. It's a great way to deform a collection of objects.